had to restart the clip. I literally just started talking today for the first time and I like was having some kind of tongue twister when I when I turn on the mic here. So let's get into it. Today's gonna be monsters and we're gonna be doing a white frost deck. Now this one was a request and if you guys haven't seen it, I do have a request tab in the community posts. You guys can go and put in requests there for anything that you like to see. So let's fulfill this one here. We're doing frost and you know it's very tricky to find a diverse list when we're building it here because if you type in wild hunt there's only so many cards some of which are just more playable than others um and so forth and then you have like cards like toad prince that just feel like an auto include in any sort of monsters deck right now um normally nithra would be in its place but i just feel like this has immediate value opposed to just you know um taking time to develop and being you know removal and whatnot um, at 5 power, 6 power, 7 at best. So we'll just go ahead there and just get that Toad. Now this deck does really well against any sort of engine decks because we have so much damage and control and we have a lot of just point reach within bronze cards. First matchup we have Invigorate and you know looking at the last couple turns they're trying to establish engines and this is what I'm talking about. Dunka goes, you could put Frost here, you know and start to get rid of some of these problems, right? And we have a really good opportunity to win on even if we're going second. So, you know, red coin abuse is generally when you're going to be bringing this deck. If it was like a tournament setting, for example, it's a great deck to bring on red coin. It still has enough points to get out of a round if we go first in a round one. So it uh, it's pretty versatile overall. The only sort of pitfall I guess we have in this case would be the fact that it is Devotion, but with recent buffs it just makes sense to give it a shot as it is. And we want to look to remove the Sorceress, we also want to look to remove the... Well the Hawk Smuggler is going to go by itself here. Consideration to get that online. Dominance, obviously, we're going to be getting a boost every turn, and that should just be fine. It turns off the back engine. They don't have a way to boost the sword up. Um, I want to make sure of it, though. There's consideration to Toad Prince, but we can also save it. If they haven't boosted it by now, chances are they don't really have a way to do it, so... Here we go. They used one of their leader charges, and so did we, so I'd say we're pretty even on that one. And, you know, the goal when you're playing against Invigorate is to try to get out as much of that carryover as possible. So in round three, they're not really playing a super boosty hand or anything like that. So we try and force it all the way down in round two, and fortunately we have a pretty good hand. You know, obviously we still have some finishers for round three, but it would be kind of nice to get, like, uh... There, we'll just tuck that back to pull it out with uh, Gales. <laughs> and this game's a perfect example of, you know, how to really push it in round one. So I think that's always going to be the goal in most cases, right? The only time I wouldn't really force around one is if our hand was just so top heavy that it would be like a diminishing return. But if we're full we of bronzes, you just go and crank it. Makes it tricky here. Again, um, you know, there's consideration to put down Aridin off the get go, but I just feel like we still have an opportunity to kind of see what we're doing here. Illusions. See if they have any big commitments. Obviously, the second leader is nice to see here. And Aridin on the back row should just be fine. Puts the Sorceress out of use and turns off the Defender, right? They can't use that here. We know they played a Rebuke, that's not really a big deal. We did lose Dominance, so we're losing that extra damage at the end of every turn. Let's wait for 
we can just go and light up the row, and that's perfect because now they're fighting this frost for the rest of the round, and it helps us sort of even get card advantage if we're in a situation where, like, if we pass here, we'd probably be up one or two cards, but... Having seen the Protector go down, just put pressure on with the Yeager. Again, even if it gets removed, we still have a pass. Oath Prince is like really good for a short round. So I'm thinking, why don't we just turn on an engine here and, um, you know, move that around just so we can wipe the board and then we have to have them worry about these 29 points and counting, right? So Gord comes down a bit early for 15. I'm thinking last card's probably Torque, right? Because Torque starts in hand. And I don't think that Torque's tall enough, but again, I wasn't really doing the math throughout the round, so we just pass here just to make sure. But they're still gonna have to get the 18 points in order to get ahead. I'm really hoping that I ordered like a pair of headphones, um, like earbuds on Best Buy's website last night and I just checked to see where they'd be at before I started recording here and apparently they're supposed to be delivered any point today so I'm really hoping someone doesn't uh, ring the doorbell while I'm trying to finish this here but uh, see how it goes. Normally I just do it in one big take so kind of want to stay in the zone here. We got Inspired Zeal coming up next. Um, did an Inspired Zeal deck yesterday, guys, for a deck guide. If you're new to the channel and you're looking to play Inspired Zeal or you're looking to play better against it, maybe you'd see some uh, some value from that last video that uh, I posted. Going into this one here, we know the mages are going to get out of hand, so we have a lot of stuff to really kind of put the brakes on some of them. Um, unfortunately, our hand doesn't have a Parasite or any of our natural selections, but that's not the end of the world. At least start the second engine. It's just a good card, so it's going to be boosting every time, like, in every turn there's a Frost on the other row, and then... You know, you have the frost coming from it for two turns. It's just it's pretty good. It's like a dual engine, basically. It doesn't go too tall, so it's not like a huge liability for us. We already have enough tall units. There was some consideration here to take out, like, the Yigurn and potentially put, like, a Goliath or, like, a Poom, a Pugo, and then sort of try and work back in the Nithral, but uh, I just felt like it was a little bit tricky because, you know, you get so much value off Imlarith with the Yigurn if you could pull it off. And then of course the Yigurn also is great for the sealing of our um, Wrath if we, you know, don't have Imlarith. And, you know, then the Osril is going to get bigger. So when you look at, like, the extra few points, potentially three times within you know, the matchup, it's hard to justify switching it out for something else. But, uh, definitely was a thought. I've seen some versions going around with Mamuna as well. And I tried something like that before. Um, 
it's tricky for me like to pull off the Mamuna combo and the Emlareth combo, you know, because it's relying on sort of those bronzes, otherwise it gets in trouble. Um, you know, and having cards like Griffin in a deck that's uh, Wild Hunt, there's not as much synergy there because if we have to play it from hand, then it gets kind of nasty because what are we going to really look to remove, you know, most of our cards are engines or cards that we want to keep on our side. We'd have to get creative with like a natural selection and make like little tokens to, to use it off of and stuff like that. So I couldn't be bothered this time around. Let's pass on them in round two so we force a round three and, you know, have none of that patience carried over, which is great. Now, there's a lot of different versions of mages, right? So I have no idea exactly what they're going to be playing. However, it does look pretty familiar so far. Thinking about what we need. Um, Winter Queen comes out with the Double Frost. And, you know, a lot of times people will, like, play that in round one. I mean, sometimes you want to save that for round three, right? It's an engine, and it's also points on the board. So if you don't need to take it round one, don't take it round one. And you might see through some of the games today, I didn't take it in certain points, right? Because maybe you want to save the points for later, uh, especially if you have a lot of your tutors in, in your hand and stuff like that. But in this case, we can just start off a little non-interactive and just start taking out some of these engines here. I'm prioritizing the Siege ones because when I see Siege dropped, right, kind of makes sense. Get rid of them so future bombardments aren't as good. Um, this is a really good Parasite here. And just in case they boost that somehow we I actually want to take that with parasite because we can look at removing the ram with uh, toad prince because ram's cooldowns like it's a lot slower before it does damage to us so it just makes sense get rid of the one that's using its ability every single turn and then has that extra uh, warfare resupply clause on it You've met your match, so now we have to start actually playing the whole non-interactive thing's been fun, but we'll go ahead and eat that. And, you know, I know it's not going to turn off the Banner Student, but at least we put it on the back row so we don't have to worry about it, you know, once the rounds come to an end and we can start chipping at it there. We got to get dominance, so, you know, that's always a consideration. And just another Overtune card comes down. Shiny's great, but... Uh, Not for us here. Got to start getting some engines out. Bring me fish tech. So leave me be. And I'm thinking long term. Your soul will propel this launch. So we're jamming that front row and then we can just fill up the back row with frost. Put down Aridin. It doesn't look like a lot, but uh, I'm pretty comfortable at this point with the spoiled scenario. They have a couple duels at best and that's about it. We have a lot of cards to kind of push rows around and they're pretty much going to have frost on their side of the board till the game's over. So, you know, it's a little cozier than it looks right now. And, you know, Nagle far into a, a Parian Phantom just to kill off that Ballista is actually good because we negate the two there. And then we also make any sort of bombardments if they're to be played again less effective so and you see what I mean just that one little turn you know all of a sudden
card up and about nine points up here. So we can just go ahead and tuck more frost down. And one of the things that makes this leader a bit more playable is when we put the, you know, um, wild hunt units down, they're getting boosted from our leader if we have frost out, so it, it definitely helps to go ahead and boost in the shanty. I'm worried about them having a cooldown for that, but there's really not a lot we can do. Let's go ahead and do some more damage to it there. I'm thinking dual and dual, but again, I wasn't counting provisions thoroughly. Like I see Gerard, I see like a uh, Rafford's Shanny, you know, Siege. There's, if they're running double duels at this point, then they're probably not running a Dahlia. You know, go ahead and take out. I mean, I wouldn't take out that one necessarily. Probably look for the Aridin or the Auburn King. We'll see if it makes a difference. They would have lost um, about two points on the play. Well, yes and no, because it's also lower power, so. And when you look at it here, it doesn't matter. It's just very strong. So next up we got lined pockets. Um, I'm thinking maybe bounty could just be old school lined pockets. That, again, it's really tough to kind of know what you're playing against these days. So tuck back winter queen. We've got a decent amount of bronzes in hand. Osroll round one, I'm being, um, I wouldn't say greedy, it just, we don't want to be caught with that card if we want to go into a deep round one, so putting that back, saving it for later is fine, and, you know, looking for the other counterpart of Osroll. Um, Yegern's a bit better. Of course, Yegern in this matchup is a huge liability, so it's too bad that we don't have Imlareth, but... This is one of those situations where we do go first, so, you know, you'll see if we have to get out of the round, how we're going to go up and do that. Might as well make the Yeager in a challenge, put it down for as much armor as possible, and then we can sort of get some frost established, maybe play a couple little specials and get out of the round. All depends on when they concede like I don't want to be using a toad prince or anything super expensive here so we'll just go ahead and start that engine and Furco justice play is actually kind of annoying because uh, if we want to keep adding frost we're gonna lose a lot of value on the frost they have full coins now, boats out. We're actually not even that far ahead. Like if we drop a Conqueror, for example, puts us in a situation where if they remove Jaeger and they're ahead, if they could take like a Marils or something. They could take like a Orson, right? Or they can just poison it. You know, either way. We know that at least 
it's going to be very difficult for them to push if you know they were looking to bleed initially because we have the two card advantage so pretty much gives us a long round and we have time to recomp this hand because it's like all bronze cards it's not what we want for round three Auburn's good to see we can we actually don't have access oh we do So Nagelfar into Gales into Frost, or Nagelfar directly into Frost, there's a couple different ways to get it. And that's fine, we'll pass here, take the extra mulligan and go forward. By the way, I have a Team Legacy tournament um, going on right now, where it's like a, sort of like a Legacy League, where we all play against each other. Um, from the content creation team for bragging rights and stuff like that. Um, I have a game against Baron Grimswald. It's coming up this week, and last week was a sit-out week for me, so I'm excited to get back into it. I'll bring a few of the decks that we've been playing on these videos over the last couple weeks. I'll, I'll pick a few. It's basically um, best two out of three, and it's a closed deck list, so you know there's not really a way to tech about it. And we have one leader band, so you know you're you're bringing two decks effectively that are going to be competing, and we got to get both of those decks through. So I'll try and go through the process with you guys too. Maybe I'll make a more of a in-depth video of that. Maybe show you guys like the the process of taking bands, you know, and then the live tournament games. Um, just see, so you, you know, if you guys are ever finding yourself in like a tournament setting, then you can kind of prepare for it that way. I know that there are some community tournaments that you guys can easily sign up for on the playgwent.com website. Generally speaking, there's not like a lot of prize pools within the community, so it would just be more or less for fun. But some of them do have like small prizes and stuff like that, so you know. It's uh, definitely more fun, like I find, playing in a tournament setting than playing on the ladder because you're playing for something besides just a win, you know? Obviously winning's the goal, but it just feels like you accomplished a bit more. So we got just an annoying round three off the get-go. We gotta get rid of her, and uh, it's gonna be a little bit tricky because Parasite takes it down to four and then takes it down to two. But if they stack beside it, then it kind of gets out of reach, right? Cleaver comes down. That's even worse for the whole frosting we have going on. And, you know, good example of what happens when we miss a few gold cards here. This will show if the deck stands the true test. And, you know, often when you're in a position where your round three hand's not as good as you think, you know, I would still stick it out through the game because you never know. Final drill comes down. And I'm going to go ahead and push that to the back row because next turn I want to get out Frost on both rows. Start getting value from that because we have the three turns left at that point, right? Because they're going to be sinking most of their removal into that card at this point. Now we can go ahead and take the next bruiser and put her on the back row to remove her. Um, that's definitely something that I would probably look to do sooner than later. Perfect. And it's too bad that we couldn't get rid of Drill there. They're really trying to preserve it, but how much more coins can they have? Siggy's been used here. Oh, 
guess that's the last little bit of removal. Still not a bad spot to be in. We have a huge point swing off of the Oswald, right? And the frost just keeps ticking here. Freak show, but a lack of funds. And we can just put down Osril. Again, it's going to be close. Definitely be close. Good frost hit there. Philippa comes down for five. So even if the frost didn't hit, we would have actually still got that game by one point. Doubling back to another line pockets video. And honestly, guys, like I tried to get a different matchup for the fourth, but. I queued into Magus again, and I just didn't bother playing that game, and then I queued into this, and I'm like, alright, you know what, at this point, let's just get it over with, because, <laughs> you know, I was trying to get games for a good amount of time, and I figured you get the point either way. There we go, tuck that back, so I want to have alternative targets for the Imlarith, so... Why not? And this card right here demands like a horse in, otherwise it just stays and it just gets pretty annoying for them. So Sly Seductress, that's something a bit new. No need to rush it here, you can just go down with the natural selection. And by the way guys, I was looking into some of the stats, you know, I... I get inspired by the numbers and stuff like that, but I could see that 79.2% or something in that, you know, points range um, of you guys that watch the channel aren't subscribed to the channel. So if you guys want to help support the cause and, you know, support those daily up uploads of the Gwent decks and all that stuff, make sure you drop a sub on this one. Fish stick for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's the dream. So I'm thinking that they're looking for a pass here. You know, they just play it down for points and profit. It's pretty slow. It feels like I kind of want to just put down the thin package because we're not really committing much at this point. However, we're still getting active value from that engine. And, you know, we can look at passing at any time here. It's a little late in the round to play another engine, so... Yeah. So that goes down. There's no bounties put out. Only four coins. I'm not super threatened by this. I know that if we pass here, we're probably still getting a long round three. And I don't really know how important last say is in this matchup for us. So, you know, 18 point difference in counting. I think that they were bluffing us here. Surely they can do it in two, though. Or at least use a tall removal on our 4P in the front. But I guess it was a bluff. So winning on even's great. Winning on even on blue maybe shouldn't happen, but it happens. And we still haven't taken that frost in, so, you know, again, there's no reason not to play into this round. I want to put down the how uh, take out the hound because I feel like it's a little bit greedy to put down two slow engines, especially when you're playing against line pockets like that. Um, they'll just answer that really quickly. Deals can be filed within seven years. Again, Jaeger and down with armor. It's probably better to do earlier on than later. It'll cost them more to remove it. Um, this is another one of the reasons why I felt like Jaeger and I, I was looking for an active substitute because I felt like maybe the Syndicate matchup would be bad. Skellige would be bad in a lot of cases too. Skoytel could be bad. There's a lot of ways that the Jaeger and suffers, but again, it's a huge um, point swing that often kind of ultimately wins the game when it's close. It's 
they, if they were to take like a grade in on that, it would be pretty massive. Oh, that's still pretty bad. Two, four, six. They're just gonna wipe us here. But this is kind of what we want to see. They still have full leaders, so we kind of want to get out some of those charges as well. You know, putting Frost down here doesn't seem like a big problem for us. It uh, helps us decide a bit more if we're going to play into the round. Taking a Bruiser here is probably the next play because push that horse in back, shut it down. We have Frost on the row, it's going to damage it, then the tax collector is going to die. A lot, sometimes um, with this deck it takes a little bit longer to roll out ideally than you like. So sometimes you'll find yourself playing cards where you don't have Frost on the row yet, so you're not getting the extra points, so, you know. In this case I'm concerned about maybe a potential tavern brawl or something like that because it's like an unconventional syndicate deck with the sly seductress and all that so there could be like a tavern brawl and you know if we play two tall units beside each other it could get kind of awkward for us here too and whatever they put down here we can look at using the other bruiser before the turns over Not gonna kill it just yet. And that's what you like to see. Leader charge comes out right right quick. Um honestly. I think we just put down Arid in here get a little bit more consistency out of the deck. Short round Aridin's not going to be as good, but we still have the option to crank it here if they play something else. have them in a really good spot so we can go ahead and put down that bruiser right here push that in the back row board wipe once again only two bleeding it's not a big deal it looks like they're having a hard time with the spenders so 12 points 11 with the bleed at the end of the next turn i mean we probably have a pass regardless here And short round frost, like I said, it's not going to be as much of a deal. Um, we get the three damage here if we just greet it a little bit. And even if they remove that, it's still not really a big deal for us. Yeah, they take Graydon, they still have to play. So we got out the entire leader here. Uh, they have no spenders effective on the board to use those coins they got. They're going to carry over less coin into round three because that's going to be cut in half. And they've got to play the last card. So we pretty much put ourselves in a double assay, I guess. Yeah. Now, having looked at that, it's unfortunate because we actually would have 2 0 But by passing there. It uh, pretty much guarantees us like a very easy win at this point. Like I, I don't know what they would have left. And we can actually put back the Ardgeth and take the Osral. That's always better.
there you have it. Now, Auburn goes down. Um, it would have been one extra point if we put it right beside, but I was concerned about, again, the tavern brawl. Uh, I just had like this eerie feeling like that could be the case. You know, if it costs us, like, um, the points, then fine. And, uh, you know, there's consideration. I decided to play this one here just to kind of see, because even if they tavern brawl now, it doesn't matter. If they tavern brawl, they don't have an effective spender, so that's fine. Nine would have got removed regardless, whether it was the back row at nine or that at nine. They forfeit here. Oswald's just too many points. We remove the ten. 